lobbying means the deliberate attempt to influence political decisions through various forms of advocacy directed at policymakers on behalf of another person, organization, or group. But is lobbying constitutional? I asked State Senator Steve Swadzinski for his opinion in my interview with him. Yeah, I think so. I mean, yeah, I mean, it's protected under the First Amendment, freedom of assembly, freedom of press, freedom of speech. Um, I think it's a protected right, freedom, right to petition. I guess that's what they're doing is they're petitioning their government. So yeah, it's, it's, I think it's a constitutional right. So you're probably thinking, what's the big deal with lobbying then? What problems could it pose? Supporting that idea is the fact that citizen lobbying is a very common way for elected officials to encounter lobbying. Citizen lobbying can be defined as lobbying done by a, an average person of the United States, not necessarily a paid professional. Today I met with two different lobbyists. One was a group that believes that um, um, parents should be given the choice whether or not they vaccinate their kids because um, they believe that vaccinations in many cases do more harm than good. And I'd never really thought of that point of view before, so it was interesting just to hear their, that point of view. And the other lobbyist I met with today was a, a, a member from the Boundary Waters who came here today to, um, to lobby against PolyMet and um, Twin Metals. And it was just very, very interesting and very, very informative. And he brought me all these great maps that I'm gonna go home tonight and study and go over and um, so it was just interesting that all these materials these guys these lobbyists leave you all the time so the two lobbyists today were was the boundary waters people and then these people um vaccine safety council and they just want us to, to vote on a bill coming up this week on whether or not parents should be allowed the option of um, whether or not they vaccinate their kids and be told that um, the pros and cons to vaccination. Um, so it was just two interesting lobbyists that just came through this door today. And then tonight, that's what I'll do when I get home, read the stuff they gave me, and then someday I'll have to vote on their bills. And that's how it's supposed to work, and it's perfect. Um, you know, a real active citizen group is um, um, parents that have um, dyslexic children. They're a very active group, and so I guess that'd be a group of citizens. And they don't have the money of some lobbyist groups, but they certainly have the passion for what they believe in, and they want more mo uh, money for to help their kids learn to read. But consider this staggering statistic. Should a company invest in professional lobbying, the return on investment is up to 22,000%. That means for every dollar put in, the company gets back two hundred and twenty dollars. That number seems so high. <laughs> it's yes. un, it's not. It's remarkable. I mean, because if that is true, because I'm looking. Well, I don't. Um, if that number is true, um, that's a good investment on your dollar. Yes, sir. Yeah. I mean, I, you, I don't think you'd find another. So, but I don't believe it. Because it's just, it's my, my goggles of Mr. Smith goes to Washington. I just don't believe that number. But if it is true, holy cow, we got a problem. It's perfectly legal to buy political influence in America. Here's how it works. Let's say a big bank wants a law that would force taxpayers to bail them out again if they repeat the exact same reckless behavior that crashed the global economy in 2008. Not exactly the most popular idea with the public, and Congress knows that. That should be the end of it. But that's where the money comes in. It's perfectly legal for our bank to hire a team of lobbyists, whose entire job is to make sure that the government gives the bank what it wants. Then, those lobbyists can track down members of Congress who regulate banks and help raise a ton of money for their re-election campaigns. It's perfectly legal for those lobbyists to offer those same politicians million-dollar jobs at their lobbying firm. Then, those lobbyists can literally write the language of this new bailout law themselves and hand it off to the politician they just buttered up with campaign money and lucrative job offers. And it's perfectly legal for those politicians to take the lobbyist written language and sneak it through Congress at the last second. So now you've got a law that greatly benefits the banks and the whole process can start over. This is how a bill becomes a law. 
A special interest hires some lobbyists, those lobbyists collect campaign contributions, offer jobs, and then write the laws that Congress then passes to help those same special interests. This happens every day on every single issue with politicians of both parties.